Ripple CEO, SEC case is going much better than I hoped. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse is increasingly optimistic that the long-running case with the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, will deliver a positive result for the blockchain-based global payments company. Speaking on the main stage at Paris Blockchain Week on Thursday, Garlinghouse told attendees of the Fireside Chat that Ripple's defense in the ongoing case was faring better than he expected. The lawsuit has gone exceedingly well and much better than I could have hoped when it began about 15 months ago. Live from hashtag PBWS 2022, at Garlinghouse sat down with at CNBC and number 39, S at Ryan underscore Brown underscore to talk crypto regulation, Ripple and number 39, S global traction and use cases that he sees growing across the industry. The SEC filed suit in 2020 against Ripple and its senior executives Brad Garlinghouse and Christian Larson for selling unregistered securities in the form of XRP. The comments come following a Ripple Net community lawyer's announcement that Ripple had secured a very big win against the SEC after presiding Judge Sarah Netburn denied the SEC's request to reconsider shielding documents under privilege. The documents were related to a speech delivered by former SEC Director, William Hinman, where he specified that Bitcoin, BTC, and Ethereum, ETH, are not securities. This case is important, not just for Ripple, it's important for the entire crypto industry in the United States said Garlinghouse. He added that if Ripple were to lose the case, a precedent could be set that would see most tokens on cryptocurrency exchanges become recognized as securities by the SEC. This would mean that exchanges can be forced to register with the SEC as brokers and exchanges would be compelled to register the identity of all token holders. If you determine XRP as a security of Ripple, we have to know every person that owns XRP, he said. That's an SEC requirement. You have to know all of your shareholders. It's not possible. However, a convincing Ripple victory could see the SEC take a step away from its aggressive pursuit of the crypto industry. MicroStrategy Shareholders Letter, Will Vigorously Pursue More BTC Buys MicroStrategy CEO Michael Saylor has proclaimed to shareholders of his company that his firm intends to vigorously pursue its reserve assets strategy to buy and hold more Bitcoin. Saylor's publicly traded company is the largest single wallet holder of Bitcoin. BTC, in the world with 129,218 BTC according to wallet tracker Bitcoin Treasuries. Those coins are currently valued at about $5.1 billion. MicroStrategy bought 4,197 more coins on April 5th. By comparison, Tesla, MicroStrategy's runner-up in the hodling race, owns 43,200 BTC valued at about $1.7 billion. In MicroStrategy's 2022 proxy statement that was filed with the SEC on April 14, Saylor praised his company's ongoing success in being early to add BTC to its treasury and add value for customers and shareholders. MicroStrategy only paid about $3.9 billion for the BTC in its treasury, translating to a paper profit margin of $1.2 billion. Saylor wrote in a letter, Our parallel strategy to acquire and hold Bitcoin has been a tremendous success. The letter also states that MicroStrategy's BTC holdings are well in the green, but made it difficult for the company's executives to obtain liability insurance. As a result, Saylor has provided the insurance out of his own pocket. Saylor's 68.1% ownership of MicroStrategy means that he can pretty much do what he likes at the company, which also helps explain why more companies have not followed his lead. He's been one of the most vocal proponents for Bitcoin since 2020 and uses his position to reach global audiences. On March 29, the macro strategy subsidiary of Sailor's software firm said it would use $205 million obtained in a Bitcoin collateralized loan from Silvergate Bank to buy more BTC. Sailor said in an announcement that the loan marked the first time his company was using its BTC holdings as productive collateral. Despite global headwinds from the war, inflation and interest rate rises, Miko Strategy and Duquan Stera, LUNA, Buying tens of millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin at a time has helped maintain some confidence in prices. Terra's holdings are now only 800 coins behind Elon Musk's Tesla, which holds the second most BTC among publicly traded companies. 
Bitcoin is down 2.65% over the past 24 hours trading at $40,109 according to Cointelegraph data. Punk6529 unveils Metaverse Museum District, most high-end art NFTs ever. Popular NFT collector Punk6529 today unveiled an ambitious open Metaverse project that is looking to attract 100 million users. The self-funded project is dubbed OM and aims to be an open platform that is built and shared by the community. The broader vision for the project is to launch 10 self-governing cities with a max population of 10 million each. The museum district of the first city, Genesis City, was launched in alpha mode earlier today, with Punk6529 bullishly telling their 323,200 Twitter followers that it might be the most high-end art NFTs ever displayed in one place. A promo video for OM shows a long list of NFTs from top projects such as CryptoPunks, Tyler Hobbs' Fidenza Collection, Bored Ape Yacht Club and Artblocks. At this stage, there are 2,000 NFTs on display that belong to either Punk6529 or the project's team members. However new users will be also able to load their NFTs into OM's galleries. 5 slash what is in here? The 6529 Museum of Art The museums of 6529 team members It is my favorite visualization of NFT art to date. I also think it may be the most high-end art NFTs ever displayed in one place. The tour is later in the thread. The NFT proponent outlined that they are not looking to charge fees or generate crowdfunding at this stage, as they look to deliver a working product before scaling up via investment. At this stage, anyone is free to join and build in the alpha as long as their ideas match that of the museum district. I do not want your ETH, I want your input on how to design OM. I collect in public, I invest in public and we are going to build OM in public together. The fundamental governance model of OM is at the district level, districts can either be developed or open. 6529 is going to develop the 6529 museum district for example. Others can develop others. Others can be free for all experimental spaces, they added. To celebrate the beginning of OM I just took and minted a photo from the highest building of the hashtag 6529 Museum District, inspired by a drifter shoots. This is truly amazing, thank you for creating this. At Punk6529 at 6529 or hashtag OM hashtag openmetaversepick.twitter.com slash HP VZN. In terms of scale. Punk6529 stated that the museum district has 25 active buildings in the center square, along with another 2,000 buildings that are yet to be activated. Each building can host between 1 to 100 spaces, so this district type can easily host 100,000 citizens, Punk6529 said. The NFT collector also offered their take on an open metaverse, noting that they envision OM as having no one party in charge. A metaverse where you don't have to worry who is the shareholder and do you agree with them? This is not so shocking, humans have accomplished this before. There is not one human being in charge of, email, or HTML or TCP IP or Bitcoin or ERC721. Absolutely blown away by the open metaverse created by at Punk6529 at Batsupium at Crib Haran at Banaf ID and at Athek Collector and at Fon underscore Row. Spent the evening exploring and enjoying all of the incredible art. I can see myself spending a lot of time here in the future. For the project to grow and attract a mainstream audience, Punk6529 notes that it will have to be affordable, user-friendly and provide a bridge to the real world to scale beyond ETH slash cryptodigens. If all goes to plan, OM will transition into a public beta around June or July if the metaverse attracts enough users and the tech is able to support further development in large spaces. Cointelegraph has reached out to Punk6529 for more information on the project and will update the story if there Elon Musk's top priority for Twitter includes cutting down on crypto scam tweets. With a net worth of reportedly more than $300 million, Elon Musk said he could technically afford to purchase Twitter outright, but also had plans to change the user experience of the major social media platform. In a Vancouver TED conference held Thursday, Musk told curator Chris Anderson that if his offer to buy Twitter was successful, he would consider changing the way the platform handles controversial content by not promoting certain tweets and adding the ability to edit tweets as well as show that history. The Tesla CEO added that under his prospective leadership, Twitter should be reluctant to delete things and permanently ban accounts, but would endeavor to encourage free speech according to respective countries' laws. A top priority I would have is eliminating the spam and scam bots and the bot armies that are on Twitter, said Musk. They make the product much worse.
If I had a Dogecoin for every crypto scam I saw, we'd have 100 billion Dogecoin. Elon Musk speaking to TED curator Chris Anderson in Vancouver. According to a Wednesday filing with the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, Musk offered to purchase Twitter shares, aside from the roughly 9% that he already owns, for $54.20 per share, which represented a 38% premium over the stock's closing prices of April 1st. At the time of publication, shares of Twitter are priced at $45.08, having risen more than 30% in the last 30 days. Reactions to the Tesla CEO's potential ownership of the popular social media platform were mixed. Many lauded the move as a step in the right direction for free speech while others pointed to Musk's own seemingly immature behavior on Twitter as well as his immense wealth. It takes some pretty impressive mental gymnastics to associate any type of freedom with the richest man in the world initiating a hostile takeover and forcing one of the largest public social media platforms private, said Jackson Palmer, the co-creator of Dogecoin. The price of Dogecoin, D-O-G-E, was largely unaffected by both Musk's Twitter stock buy as well as his offer to purchase the firm. As of April 4, Musk was the company's largest shareholder, but was reportedly overtaken Thursday by Vanguard Group, which increased its holdings to more than 10% of Twitter's share. Archie Comics and Palm NFT Studio want fans to co-create the comics future series. American comic book publisher Archie Comics, known for its iconic Riverdale characters, is leveraging the blockchain to develop fan-generated art and stories as well as Archie-inspired NFT collections. Laura Braga and Vince Zofederici, the artists behind the 80-year-old franchise, partnered with Palm NFT Studio to create a new blockchain-based writer's room called the Archiverse, Eclipse. According to the company, the Archiverse intends to empower Archie Comics fans to author the brand's future through generative storytelling. Its writer's room invites fans to create and submit new storylines for their characters. The creators of selected submissions will be directly rewarded and granted story credits from future comic series integration. Archie CEO John Goldwater said in a statement that since the success of the television adaptation of Archie characters in Riverdale and the emergence of blockchain technology, we knew we had to find the right partner and platform to introduce Archie 3.0, we cannot wait to introduce the gang to a whole new audience in a whole new way. The world of Archie 3.0 will be heralded by an NFT drop of a PFP project inspired by the chilling adventures of Sabrina, a series published by an imprint of Archie comics called Archie Horror. Archieverse, Eclipse NFTs will comprise 6,666 generative characters and 3 billion outcomes will be released on May 16th, the night of a blood moon, and challenge collectors to crack an ominous prophecy. The future of collectibles is here with the Archieverse NFTs. Interact and help guide the future of Archie Comics like never before. Unlock the universe of Archie Comics to play, create, and be credited on a forthcoming comic book title X. When it comes to writers' rooms, traditionally made up of showrunners, producers, and TV writers, a blockchain writers' room differs in that only NFT holders can access and participate in content creation. The largest one at the moment belongs to Jenkins the Valet, the eyes and ears of the Board Ape Yacht Club. Cointelegraph spoke to Jenkins about what it takes to portray apes and mutants in an upcoming book penned by New York Times best-selling author Neil Strauss. As for carrying out large-scale intellectual property IP, licensing in the NFT space, Palm NFT Studio is no Web3 rookie. It recently launched an NFT project with Warner Brothers Consumer Products DC Comics known as the Bat Cowl Collection, a drop of 200,000 unique 3D-rendered Batman Cowl NFTs. Matt Mason Chief Content Officer at Palm NFT Studio spoke to Cointelegraph about how emblematic IP can operate as digital social objects by fostering authentic fan participation and community. He added that the Bat Cowl Collection invites DC Universe fans to create their own unique identities and have access to exclusive rewards. Reputation DAO, would you give up privacy for unsecured loans into FI? An ambitious new decentralized autonomous organization, DAO has built a data service for lending platforms that records a user's financial reputation to reduce the amount of collateral needed for a loan. It has partnered with Chainlink and that protocol's founder Sergey Nazarov is an early backer. Users of Reputation DAO will have traditional financial data such as anti-money laundering and Know Your Customer, AML slash KYC, credit scores and banking data tied to their account. The data is designed to help ease friction in obtaining a loan from a decentralized platform but raises questions about security and the principles of zero-knowledge lending.
The reputation Dow Team told Cointelegraph its connection with those traditional financial authorities is critically important to remove some of the trust barriers related to under-collateralized lending. Decentralized Finance, DeFi, protocols such as Aave, AAVE, and Maker, MKR, require users to put down at least 150% the value of the loan they wish to take out. This over-collateralization protects the protocols from insolvency in the case of liquidations due to volatility since the loans are made through zero-knowledge smart contracts. While the Reputation Dow team said retail consumers are getting more comfortable with algorithmic loans, it also pointed out that institutional interest is growing at a rapid rate. That institutional interest is clearly demonstrated by the $222 million of seed and strategic funds invested in DeFi protocols since March 15 according to crypto fundraising tracker Airtable. Reputation Dow is one of those protocols and closed a $4.7 million seed round on April 13 led by Chainlink co-founder Sergey Nazarov and Airtree Ventures. But for many DeFi users, tying sensitive financial data to a blockchain-based lending platform raises security and privacy concerns. Some users may be more comfortable putting down higher collateral on a DeFi loan if the protocols do not have access to their information, thereby keeping their identity confidential. Reputation Dow assured Cointelegraph that its partnership with the industry-leading information oracle Chainlink, which uses the privacy-preserving protocol DECO, helps keep its users' data secure. Cointelegraph reached out to an active and successful DeFi investor who asked to go by the name Unseo for his thoughts. He said that he would be wary of using Reputation Dow to help get a loan. He argued that such a service would make the DeFi system more fragile, and that I'd be trusting the judges of other participants' creditworthiness instead of going off math. Even though I have good credit, I'd rather not use a more fragile system for the convenience of having a better utilization allowance.